Hello, my little mathematicians. Today, we're going to focus on word problems involving volume. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first one says, the Jones family is moving and are going to rent a large vehicle to help move things. What's the difference between the volume of the van and the small truck? So first off, let's focus on the van. And then after that, we'll focus on the small truck. And then they said, what's the difference? So we're going to find the difference between them. So that means we're going to subtract the two volumes. So let's find the volume of the van. <clears throat> well, remember that volume of a rectangular prism, because that's what a van is, is length times width times height. Okay, because look, here's a moving van, and again, rectangular prism. So length times width times height will give me the volume. Well, they said that the length was 10 and a fifth, the width was six, and the height is five. Well, when I go to type 10 and a fifth into my calculator, how do I do that? Well, if you take the top divided by the bottom, because that's literally what a fraction says, it's top divided by bottom, that'll tell you what one fifth is as a decimal. So go ahead and do that. Okay, when you did one divided by five, you should have gotten 0.2. And then remember the 10 still stays here because 2.2 .2 is just talking about the one fifth. So now that's the length. My width is six. My height is five. I'm going to go ahead and multiply all those by calculator. And what do you get? 306. And what type of feet? Feet cubed. Because you had 10 and a fifth feet, 6 feet, and 5 feet all multiplied together. So you had three of them. So that's why volume is always cubed. That's the volume for the van. Now let's find the volume for the small truck. Well, it's also a rectangular prism, so length times width times height. And the length of that is 12, 7 and 3 fourths, and another 7. Okay, well, 7 and 3 fourths, if I were to type that into my calculator, that's going to be 7 point what? Well, 3 divided by 4 is 0.75. Okay, and then you get, type all that in, 651 cubic feet. All right, so if they said find the volume of the van, you did it. If they said, or sorry, here's the volume of the van. And if they said find the volume of the small truck, you did it. But they wanted to know what's the difference between them. So the di uh, difference means I need to subtract. So I have 651 for the small truck minus 306 for the van, and what do you get? You get 345 cubic feet. So the small truck is 345 cubic feet larger than the van. All right, there you go. You just finished that first problem. Let's take a look at these other two. They say, how much greater is the volume of the large truck than the volume of the small truck. Okay, well, up here in the same table, we have the information we need about the large truck. So the large truck, still rectangular prism, so length times width times height, is 14 by eight and a fourth by nine and a half. Okay, well, 14 stays the same, but what's 8 and a fourth? Do 1 divided by 4, and you get 0.25. And then 9 and a half, hopefully you know, is 9.5. But if you didn't, 1 divided by 2 gives you 0.5. Multiply all those together, and what's the total volume of the large truck? It's 1,097.25 cubic feet. All right, so now that we have the volume of this large truck, we need to figure out the volume of the small truck. Oh, hey, we already did up top. So they want to know the difference between them because when it says how much greater is it, that's another way of asking for the difference. Remember how much greater um, 
means you're going to find the difference between two objects. So I'm going to subtract out how big the small truck was, and it was 651 cubic feet. And when you subtract those, you get 446.25 cubic feet. So the large truck is 446.25 cubic feet bigger than the small truck. Remember, um, it's wise to always try to solve these first on your own and then um, unpause the video and see if you got it right. So hit pause, try it, and then unpause, see how you did. This one says the family needs 1,200 cubic feet to move their belongings and want to make the fewest amount of trips to and from their home. Which vehicle should they rent? Okay. Well, we already established that the van is this many cubic feet, the small truck is this many cubic feet, and the large truck is this many cubic feet. So if they need 1,200 cubic feet, is there anyone that can do it in one trip? Unfortunately, no. So um, let's see how many trips each of them would take. Well, if you do 306 into 1,200, it goes in four times. This goes in two times, and this goes in two times. So this would, the van would take four trips, both the small truck and the large truck would take two trips. So like, it doesn't really matter, right? You could take the small truck or the large truck. However, look at the prices. Um, if this is all the things that you have to move and you only have to do two trips, well then all that matters is the price, right? So right here, um, which one's the better deal? The small truck because it costs less than the large truck because they both have the same amount of trips then the amount of time you're going to need it is the same so you just want the one that costs less um so it would be the small truck all right let's go ahead and turn the page and try some more of these okay um remember that before you move all your stuff First of all, got to pack it all up into boxes. So they had to make the decision of which boxes to go with. Um, so <clears throat> it says, which box contains more room for storage and how much greater is the volume? So you have um, things from Box Co or Move Co. Um, and then depending upon your paper, some of you guys might say Boxy or Move Co. So let's take a look. <clears throat> and... Um, Actually, we're going to use this one. So I want to say more of you have this one. <clears throat> so it says, from Boxcore Move Co., which box should you use? Let's find the volume for the Boxco boxes, boxes. So we have Boxco, and the volume of a box is length times width times height. So three times three times another three. Well, three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. So you have 27 cubic feet for the box co boxes. Let's see how much space you have inside of the move co boxes. Okay, same thing. You're finding the volume. So length times width times height. And the move co boxes are two and a half, three and a half, and four. Well, that's 2.5 times 3.5 times four. Okay, so go ahead and bolt file those, and you get 35 cubic feet. All right, so you want to find the difference between them. So. 35 minus 27 and you get eight cubic feet. So that means that move co boxes have eight cubic feet more space than the box co boxes. And there you go. All right, let's see what else it's asking us. 
And remember, if you haven't tried any yourself first, always don't be afraid to hit pause, try it, and then unpause it and check. Okay, it says if the family needs 1,200 cubic feet to move their belongings, we already established that for the truck, how many box co boxes would they need to purchase versus how many box co boxes would they need to purchase? Okay, so let's focus on the box co first. Okay, the total amount of uh, things that they have is 1,200 cubic feet of stuff, right? Um, but a box co box, each one could hold 27 cubic feet. So let's see how many times 27 could go into that. And it goes in 44.4 repeating. So how many boxes is that? Is that 43, 44, or 45? Well, it's definitely not 43. It's not even 44 because 44 boxes wouldn't be enough. You still have like some of this stuff they'd have to choose to leave behind. So they need 45 boxes from Boxco if they were to go with that company. Okay, then we have Moveco. Well, Moveco, okay, same amount of stuff that the Joneses have, um, but their space inside is 35 cubic feet. And when you divide that, you get 34.285. Um, so how many boxes would they need? Well, 34 isn't enough, so they would need 35 boxes from MoveCo. So if they wanted to stay with just one company, this company would be better because you need less boxes. Um, but sometimes you want to do a mixture of both because if the boxes are all too big, they're harder to carry. Um, but this problem was just asking you to figure out how many total boxes from each company if they decided to go with just one. And that's what you did. So according to that problem, MoveCo would be the better choice. All right, um, however, then what if they say, okay, um, well, I don't care about how many to make, I wanna do it based upon which one would be cheaper for me. So. Box co boxes cost $1.49 per box, and move co boxes cost $1.99 per box. So, based upon how many I need, actually, which one should I go with? And then you're like, all right, let me figure that out for you. Okay, so box co first. Okay, um, it's $1.49 per box, and we would have to buy 45 boxes from that company. So how much would it cost us? It would cost us, type that into your calculator, 67.05 if we used Boxco. Let's compare that to Boveco. Okay, well, Boveco says that they cost $1.99 per box, and we would have to buy 35 boxes if we went with Boveco. So let's do a dollar ninety nine times thirty five. What's that? Sixty nine dollars and sixty five cents if we used Moveco. So actually, we want to go with Boxco because it's going to cost cheaper, and we'll still get all of our stuff boxed and ready to be put into the small truck. Okay. Um, how much cheaper is it? It's only two dollars and sixty cents. But hey. Every penny counts. All right, we're just whipping right along here, aren't we? Okay, I definitely want you to try to think about this one before we go through it together. <coughs> it says, one cubic inch of flour weighs 28 grams. If a bag of flour is a rectangular prism that is eight inches long, 7.5 inches wide, and weighs 25,200 grams, how tall is the bag of flour? Okay, so um, they say that it's a rectangular prism. They asked me how tall is it, so we don't know the height, but they told me that it's 7.5 inches wide and eight inches log. So normally you'd want to go volume equals length times width times height. 
and I know the length, I know the width, and I plug in whatever the volume is, and then that's how I'd solve for the height, right? However, did they tell me the volume? Mm -mm. But do you have any ideas of how to figure it out? Well, this first piece of information that they tell me is important, and so is this one. Um, it says that one cubic inch, so one cubic inch weighs 28 grams. Okay, one cubic inch weighs 28 grams. Now that I drew this, anyone have any ideas of what I'm going to do? Well, a cubic inch is a hint that that's like a volume. Because remember that volume is always represented in cubic feet or cubic inches or cubic centimeters. That's how we determine a volume. Because it's like times width times height. So if I know that one cubic inch is 28 grams, how many cubic inches is 25,200 grams? Because that's what they told us that this prism weighs. Okay, well, now that you have your calculators, can you go from 28 to 25,200? Okay, divide that and you get, yeah, if I multiply 28 times 900. So multiply one times 900 and what do you get? 900. So that means that um, a rectangular prism that weighs this much is 900 cubic inches or 900 cubic inches would be the volume. Now that I have that, I could figure out the height. What do you do first? Yes, you multiply 8 times 7.5, and that gives you 60H equals 900. Now what do you do to solve for H? Okay, all I did was I simplified those. I did 8 times 7.5. Now how do you figure out the H? I want to get it by itself. So 60 times what is 900? Well, if I divide by 60, that cancels, and I get just H, because anything divided by itself is 1. And I can do that as long as I do the same thing to the other side. And 900 divided by 60 is 15. So that means that the height is 15 inches. There you go. Okay. Now for this one, um, when you go back to check it, if you get different answers for the small part as you're like trying to figure it out, that's okay. It's just so long as we both get the same answer at the end. Um, so it says, imagine you have two rectangular prisms, one's A, the other's B. If the length and width of the prisms are the same, but the height um, is three times larger. So in other words, we have the width, or sorry, the length is three for both of them, the width is one for both of them. But when we go to do the um, height, if this was two, then this one would be three times bigger. Well, two times three is six. What does that do to the overall volume? Well, let's see. Let's focus on prism A first, okay? Um, prism A is length times width times height, so that would be three times one times two. Well, three times one is three, three times two is six, okay? So this would be six cubic units versus if I did the volume of prism B, it would be, let's see, the length is three, the width is one, the height is six. Well, three times one is three, and three times six is 18. So what happens to the overall volumes? The overall volume of prism B is three times larger than that of A. If you plugged in different numbers, how would that affect it? Let's see, what if we made this be four? What's four times three? 12. So if this was 4 and this was 12, 3 times 4 is 12, and here 3 times 12 is 36. Look, it's still 3 times bigger here. So we could kind of make a rule that when we do this, if you double one of the lakes, then the volume of the prism B, the one that you tripled the um, height for, is going to be three times as large as prism A's volume. Okay, so if we did that to one of the measurements, that's what happened. 
So what would happen if we did it to two of the measurements? <coughs> so for instance, what if um, we kept just the width the same? So this is one for both of them. But if this is three, I'm going to triple the length. Well, three times three is nine. And if this was initially two, two times three is six. Okay, so I instead of just tripling the height, this time I tripled the height and the length. What will that do to the overall volume? Any predictions? Well, let's see. Okay, volume of X is three times one times two. Well, that would be six. The volume of Y is nine times one times six. And nine times six is 54. So how do those relate to each other? Well, 54 is nine times bigger than six. And since we did this times three and this times three, three times three is nine. Oh, that makes sense. Um, let's see before we write, write the rule. Let's see if that works for everything. What if um, I made this instead be like five and this be three? Okay, well, five times three is 15 and um, three times three is nine. Okay, so we have five times one times three. And for this one, we'd have 15 times one times nine. Well, five times three is 15 and 15 times nine, what do you get? 135. Okay, see how many times bigger 135 is than 15. So 135 divided by 15, what do you know? You get nine. So this is nine times bigger. So I mean, you can test it one more time if you want. Um, but after you've seen that something works two to three times and the pattern remains the same, then you could create a rule. So if we double both the length and the width, or sorry, the length and the height, we could then say the volume of prism y, or the one that we're making bigger, um, is going to be 9 times as large as that of prism x. And congratulations, my little mathematicians. You just conquered some pretty difficult word problems involving volume. Feel free to always rewind the video and watch certain parts and try them again. You've got this.